guys, this is another video unboxing. This is the Hyper 212 Evo uh, CPU cooler by Cooler Master. Uh, I got this off Amazon for £25 um, and I looked at many reviews and it's a very um, high performing product for its price. Now it came in the Amazon packaging box with just the brown paper. So on the box we have a nice picture of the product itself and it tells you down here the uh, sockets that the uh, cooler mounts onto. On the side we also have more in detail specifications and on the back it tells you a bit, of, a bit about the product. So it has four direct contact heat pipes uh, and you can upgrade to a second fan and it comes with the brackets inside. It's a PWM fan so you can change the speed of the fan uh, and it just tells you it's an all-in-one mounting solution for Intel and AMD sockets and in the corner you can see the dimensions of the product itself. So if we go ahead and open this up we need a knife for that because that is attached. Ooh. So we have the mounting bracket underneath which is just slid in there and a uh, design so you can have AMD one side and Intel the other side. This packet shows all the accessories it comes with, so you've got the snap brackets here for the extra fan, you have some uh, thermal paste in there, and this mechanism which holds the fan onto, well the heat sink onto the CPU, and it comes with all the mounting hardware in there as well, and separate for LGA 2011. In the top we get some instructions. So these are the instructions. Um, many languages. So that's quite a broad set of instructions. Really, you only need the ones on the side. I think this is warranty information. Yep, so this is your warranty information. And there's another sheet with a user manual saying all the uh, parts it comes with in the box. So the unit itself has a fan here with specially designed blades to increase airflow and improve noise. The radiator fins are quite wide apart. I reckon they're over a millimeter, so that's going to increase airflow to try and help cool it. These pipes on the bottom, there's a sticker on there yet to, well, to protect the surface. Um, but the pipes are all touching, so this is the four contact heat pipes. So there's no gap between the uh, heat pipes on the CPU. So in the top there's a little notch there to help guide the bracket on, which I'll just get out. So this bracket here has adjustable positions for the screw. So you pull that up and then you can slide it to the correct position. You have to check the manual for your socket. The sides also adjust, so if you push them apart and twist them, you can have different angles as well, so that's for your different um, sockets. Back to the fan, it comes with a 4 pin fan header for um, speed adjustment and you can just unclip this off the side. Like that for easy mounting and then you can obviously mount another fan on the other side for push-pull configuration. You also get some silica gel in the packaging as well just to absorb the moisture. And also in the accessory packet you also get some rubber pads to fit to another fan um, to reduce the vibration. So I'm now going to fit this onto my uh, PC and I'll show you the installation process. So I've just taken the stock heatsink off of my PC and as you can see there's a huge difference in size 
this is much smaller area for the CPU to come in contact with, while this is square in the actual shape of the CPU. So, and also, if we have a look inside the case, there is a round circle on the CPU where the thermal paste has been. And as you can see, it's not covering the whole CPU, so all four corners uh, are exposed. Um, they're not being, well, the heat's not being um, taken away from there. So that is sort of flaw in the design of Intel because it's their stock cooler, which is why I'm changing it because I was hitting 95 degrees plus um, while I was doing rendering which wasn't good. So I've just taken the stock cooler off of the CPU at the moment and we need to mount the bracket for the heatsink to uh, mount to. So you need to find the four standoffs in the packet uh, like this. This is for 1150 socket. You need the four nuts and you also need the uh, bracket here. So what I've done is you need to take one of the standoffs, or two of them, and place it through the hole, like so. I've got in two so opposite corners just to hold the bracket in place. Grab the bracket, and so for Intel it needs to be, so the legs are on the motherboard, AMD needs to be the other way around, so the flat side is on the motherboard. So this sits on here, we're gonna use the middle holes so as you can see here, there's three little notches. You want the middle. You want the middle ones. So when you've got the thread sticking through the bracket, you have to get one of the nuts and just screw it on to hold the bracket in place. So I've just got the bracket on. Uh, to get the last, the last screw through, or the last standoff through, you do have to wiggle it a bit um, as it's quite tight. But then to tighten all of those for nuts you use this included little gadget here it's got a screw head on one side and then one for the nut on the other so if you put that on and you grab a screwdriver you can then tighten those up and you need to hold the other side so it doesn't spin around so if you do that for all of the four and that should be in place Once the mounting bracket has been installed on the motherboard, you need to grab this um, cross bracket here. Um, and the best way to line this up is to actually place it on the motherboard. But first of all, you need to set these um, screws where they're gonna go. Uh, if you read the manual, it does say um, for which position they need to be in for the different sockets. I'm using LGA 1150, so it, the manual says I need to have these in the middle groove. So to do that, you just pull them up and you can slide them either way. And you just need to make sure all of them are in the middle there like that. We then need to make sure that the size of the bracket is correct. So what we can do is we can place it down actually onto the standoffs and we can see if they will line up and um, I think that's actually lined up first go it's a bit difficult because I'm in the case um, but that's just something we'll have to deal with as you can see I've got quite high profile RAM there so uh, the fan may be a problem but I think it'd be fine unless I want to populate this first slot then I'll have to have it in a pool configuration but I'll change that if I need to. You need to make sure that you clean your CPU before you put the heatsink on. Uh, obviously if it's a new CPU then it should be clean unless you've got finger marks on it. Then you need to use a an alcohol wipe. I've got a uh, phone screen wipe um, which is alcohol so it does the same 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 thing, uh, just check that the ingredients hasn't got any nasty chemicals in it which will eat away your processor. So if you just get that and wipe it over, make sure it's nice and clean and no thermal paste left on it. So before we install the heat sink we have to remove the fan uh, just for ease of, ease of doing that and what you do is you just prise off these clips on the side um, 
it should pop off. Like that. So now you just have the heat sink, and when you install it, you have to take off the plastic cover. Okay, so we've now got the heatsink in um, and a couple of turns on the screws. Sorry I couldn't video that because it was rather difficult to actually um, slide the bracket through and holding the camera as well. So now you've just got to tighten down opposite corners um, just a few turns at a time so it's evenly uh, sitting on the processor. Okay, so now the cooler's in there, we need to attach the fan and it, that just clips onto the side. I've had to remove one of my RAM modules as uh, it wouldn't fit on without that and I'll put it back in afterwards. And then you just have to find the CPU fan header on your motherboard to plug the fan into it. Okay, so I've now finished the installation of the Coolmaster Hyper 212 EVO. Um, I must say the fan is relatively quiet um, at idle at the moment fans at around 1000 RPM well 800 um, and I can't hear it even with the side of the case off um, when it ramps up to maximum speed which I just did as a manual test it does get quite noisy probably the sound of an air conditioning unit in a hotel room um, but again that is with the side of the case off um, I'm just running a, a render here of a uh, program SOLIDWORKS and that, as you can see, uses my cores to the maximum. Um, I was running this with a stock Intel cooler and that was running 95 plus degrees, um, which is why I invested in this. And at the moment, it's, been, it's done two renders um, and I'm running it's about maximum 65 degrees uh, which I'm very impressed about although I do have cooler conditions um, but we shall see uh, the installation process wasn't too bad you definitely need two people to help you and hold it in place and stuff screws were a bit um, they weren't perfectly aligned when the bracket went on um, but just a little bit of wiggling did make it fit uh, yeah, it's very it's a quite very tall cooler, so make sure your case does fit it. Um, mine does, so that's fine. Uh, I think that's it for this video. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.